Welcome back. September is Leukodystrophy Awareness Month. This is a rare genetic disorder that's also known as MLD. And here to tell us more is patient advocate Maria Kefales, as well as pediatric neurologist, Dr. Laura Adang. We're so grateful they can both be here today. Dr. Laura, let's start with you. Tell me about how many families are affected by leukodystrophy or MLD. Yeah, there are around 100,000 families in the United States that are affected by MLD. Um, and that means about 30 to 40 new babies are born in the United States each year that are affected by MLD. Um, leukodystrophies themselves are collectively much more common. So it's about one in 7,000 families are affected by leukodystrophy. Maria, tell me more about your child and your experience with MLD. So like a lot of um, families impacted by MLD. We had no idea anything was wrong. My daughter, Cal, she's now 12. Uh, she was diagnosed in 2012. At the time, Cal was, uh, at first, the first symptoms were that she had not as many words as kind of we would have thought she should at her age. And she then started to sort of walk on her tippy toes. So she had gait issues. Um, and then she started falling. Um, we started to see her that she she couldn't get up the stairs on her own anymore. And at that point we got really, really scared. And we were sent to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia where Dr. Laura works. And she was uh, given an MRI and the MRI revealed catastrophic damage to the brain and central nervous system. And um, at the time the doctors told us that she would survive another three and a half years. Fortunately, um, she's actually 12 and oh, gonna turn 12 and she's done remarkably well. However, the disease is, you know, really terrible. It's a nightmare. And so she lost the ability to walk, talk, feed herself. She now gets 12 medications a day. Um, she is paralyzed. Uh, she's aware of people around her. She's quite aware of the world, but unfortunately she can't go to school. and. And so, you know, we're here talking to you today to raise awareness of MLD and also raise awareness of an important tool that can save children like Cal in the future, which is newborn screening. So, you know, it's so important to get early diagnosis and we have this incredible mechanism through the um, newborn screening, which is a little blood test that uh, they administer to newborns in the hospital. Most families don't even pay attention to it. And yet it saves the lives of 12,000 American babies every year through early diagnosis. Dr. Laura, will you explain your work specifically with MLD? Yeah, so MLD is a devastating progressive fatal disorder um, that predominantly affects young children. So in the first few years of life, a child looks normal, behaves normally, and then starts to slowly lose those skills. Um, eventually, they lose the ability to talk and walk. And so my work really focuses in on better understanding how MLD affects families and also identifying with families and working with them to find what are things that are most important to them. I think part of what we do is, is raise awareness for doctors everywhere that MLD is a thing, right? And that we can help children even if I don't have a, a specific treatment or a cure, we can make their lives better. And so we work together as big groups, identifying, you know, and creating guidelines for families and for doctors around the world. And so most of my work is focused on really improving quality of care, but also better understanding the diseases so we can treat them. Dr. Laura, what happens when a baby is diagnosed with this disease? Yeah, so unfortunately, by the time it's obvious that a child is affected by MLD, oftentimes they have severe or significant damage on in the brain and we're unable to reverse that injury. And so our goal with talking about newborn screening is that we can potentially identify children before they have problems. And that's when we have that window where we can intervene and explore what potential options might be right for the family. And so right now, we're identifying children after they already have strong symptoms and significant damage. And we really need to push that timeline back and identify children before they have any issues at all. There's a pilot program in New York state where they're looking at how well newborn screening will work for MLD. And once they validate its use, we need to 
work within our communities to have the newborn screen updated to include MLD because it's actually a state by state thing. Maria, what are you doing this month to raise awareness about MLD? Well, you know, it's been really exciting. We've been talking to folks all over the country by doing these interviews um, to raise awareness of MLD, to raise awareness of newborn screening. Not enough patient families, but even doctors um, hardly pay uh, too much attention to newborn screening. And yet, you know, it is one of the most impactful um, public health initiatives in the country. And each state, as Dr. Uh, Laura said, makes their own rules to add which disorders to the screen. Uh, it took 30 years for cystic fibrosis to be included in all 50 states. And we don't want to wait 30 years for MLD in, in these new disorders to get onto the newborn screening. So it's really important for folks to, to know, learn about newborn screening, ask questions if they're expecting a child. Um, and if they have a child now and they're worried about them, they should definitely, you know, talk to their pediatrician, um, express those concerns and, and use the tools of genetic testing, which really um, give us an incredible uh, mechanism for identifying children early on so that you don't have the out kind of outcomes that we've had with Cal's uh, situation that, you know, if I always kind of look back and think if only I had trusted my instinct and asked questions and asked for genetic testing back in 2012, maybe things would have been different. But those genetic tests didn't exist the way they are now. They've never been more effective and, and um, easier to access. So, you know, folks listening today, grandparents and parents, I hope that they will trust their instincts and ask questions and get their pediatrician calling, uh, you know, to get testing and, and further evaluation. And Dr. Laura, what do people need to know about these diseases, specifically MLD and leukodystrophy? Yeah, so I think just being aware that if you have concerns about your child, talk to your pediatrician. They're there to help guide you through your questions and they can help figure out um, what the right testing is or if testing is needed to help your family. And knowing that there's something like MLD out there and other leukodystrophies that affect children, I think it's important just that we're aware so that we know to test for it when we have concerns. Where can we get more information about everything you've shared with us today? Well, you can go to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Leukodystrophy Center of Excellence, where they have an incredible collection of doctors and researchers who can help you. Um, you can also go to our website at Cure MLD to learn about MLD and other leukodystrophies and uh, learn more about newborn screening. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura and Maria Kepelis, for joining us today. We really appreciate your time and attention in informing us all about leukodystrophy, MLD, and what we can do to be able to promote awareness and much more throughout the entire month of September. We'll be back with more after this.